Welcome to D-Labs Tech Tips. Today on the bench, I have a Dynaco model PAS tube stereo preamplifier. Came into the shop for a cat kit, but there's some other things that you need to be aware of. All right, let's give the old Dyna PAS a good look over. You can see the front panel is pretty much perfect. I don't see any wear of the lettering. Knobs are all original. The only thing I did spot is that the little jewel here for the power light is missing. Let's take a look around the back. There's the back side of the Dyna PAS. You can see you have AC outlets. Some of these are normally used to turn on and off your power amps, but that's really not a good idea because it will actually fatigue the power switch on the front panel. I'll give you a little tip about that later. Here are your input jacks and you have to reference this chart. So it is all set up for mag phonograph inputs. Let's take a look at this Dyna PAS at a couple different angles. Here's the chassis. Nice and clean. All the tubes are installed. Here's the tone controls. And if you look down here, you'll see the filter switch and there's nothing on it. That's been abandoned and the owner wants me to put that back to original. Then we got something going on with this switch here. See this wire? It's not going to anything and it appears as though somebody's been playing around maybe with the resistor values. I need to take a look at that. Here's the volume control. That is also not original. It's been replaced. Hopefully it's the right value. And of course here's the famous selector switch that is always known for failure. This one looks good. It's tight but the contacts do need to be cleaned so we'll take some deox to that. Here's the chassis again at a different angle. This cap assembly here with the old selenium rectifier is coming out when I put in the SDS Labs capacitor board. So this board not only replaces the old selenium in these caps, but it also replaces the main filter cap. And you do have the option of whether to keep the 12X4 rectifier tube or not. And I have some thoughts on that for you too. Other than that, it looks like some of the caps have been changed on the circuit boards. Some of the resistors may have been changed, but most of those are the original carbon type that Dynaco used. Bottom side, you can see the two circus boards. Connections look okay. There has been some type of work here. There's evidence of it there. Something was going on up here too. I'm not sure what that is. I have to verify that against the schematic. Main filter cap is right here. And you can see this resistor right, right there has overheated. And then we got these green wires taking off and going top side. Some kind of a little science experiment. We need to take a look at that. The other thing bottom side that you need to be aware of, here's your AC cord coming in. There's no fuse. Luckily the SDS board has a fuse built on it for that reason. You just have to swing the AC up, hit that fuse and go back down. And back to those green wires coming up from bottom side, they go to this little diode assembly. I'm not really sure what they're doing because this isn't actually replacing the 12X4 rectifier. It's like they put these diodes in series for some reason, but I'm just going to remove that and put it back to stock. All right, first little tech tip to consider if you're going to install this Dynaco PAS cap board by SDS Labs. So here's the board. We already talked about the fuse, which is a good idea. However, I really don't like bringing the 120 up to this board. I would prefer to put an inline fuse holder underneath the chassis. The other thing is about this board is you'll see this little pattern here. And normally there's nothing there because they say it is an option. So you can put diodes here and not use that 12X4 rectifier tube but they really don't go into any explanation of the benefits of that. Well, let me tell you what they are. So this power transformer is kind of famous for failing. And if you look on Triode Electronics, that transformer is selling for approximately $89.95. Okay, pretty pricey. So one of the reasons that this power transformer fails, other than not being fused, is the fact that it is always stressed. Okay. 
The filament lines coming off of this are rated at approximately 800 milliamps. So let's count up our tubes. You've got four 12AX7s and they all pull approximately 150 milliamps a piece filament wise according to the spec sheets. Then you have a 12X4 and he pulls approximately 300 milliamps. So add it up. You've got 600 milliamps and 300 milliamps which is 900 milliamps. The filament circuit that I looked up on this transformer is supposed to be good for 800 milliamps. So you're pulling a little bit too much current. So what's a way to make your transformer run smoother, right? Less heat? Eliminate the 12X4, right? Pull that guy out. Put the diodes on the board and now you just took 300 milliamps of load off of that transformer and you're going to extend its life. All right, tech tech number two. Obviously we have this transformer that's kind of riding on the edge, not only from the filament supply, but its high voltage supply has very little current capability. So it's going into this filter cap after being rectified by the 12X4. So if this filter cap starts failing, leaking, and pulling that high voltage down, and it's not fused, what's going to fail? Yep, the high voltage windings, all right? The other point of failure, obviously, are these filter caps on the 12 volt supply. Same deal. We already know we're at the edge, right, on the filament current available. And now, let's rectify it and throw it into some leaky caps, like this one. Look down there. See that big popper hanging out of the nose of it? Yep. They're going to leak, pull excessive current, and take out your power transformer. So what's the best way to protect that power transformer and save yourself a $90 expense? Put in fresh caps, put in this board, use the diodes, eliminate the 12X4. Alright, so I'm going to start the process on getting the preamp up and running. First thing I'm going to do is remove those caps, get the new board in, and we'll give her a preliminary test, make sure that it can pass some signals. Then I'll work on the filtering circuit and take care of some of the other issues that the preamp has. Now, I talked to the owner and I explained to him the advantage of the 12X4 tube going to the diodes and he said, just leave the tube in. So that's what I'm going to do. So as I stated earlier, I'm not going to show the step-by-step -step procedure of changing the cap board in this video since I've already done it. So I'll put the link to that video in my description. All right, I'm going to start by just clipping this stuff out of my way. Get a clean slate and get our new board mounted here. I've cut the wires loose from this rectifier cap assembly for the filament circuit. I made sure to leave the wiring grouped the way it was as connected so that it makes it a little bit easier to hook up the new board. So I was telling uh, an engineer I worked with about this project and I said yeah this thing actually uses a selenium rectifier and he looked at me funny because he knows I'm kind of a Star Trek guy. He thought I was making that up. I was like, no man, it is really a selenium rectifier. And that's what this is. So this was before the days of power diodes. So they had to make their diodes out of these plates. And there's some kind of selenium material, right? Selenium rectifier, I'm not kidding. All right, she's loose. It's gonna come right out of here. And the new board will drop right over that stud and go right in the place of that old assembly. Obviously, you're going to want to put some other nuts and washers to hold that thing up off the chassis. All right, another little tech tip for you before you wire up this high voltage from the 12X4 up to your board and then distribute that to the other PC boards you want to make absolutely sure that you have totally isolated this filter cap. So all these components you see under here and you see these leads that are landed on those terminals, that has to be totally disconnected. So you're best off to just get in here and cut those terminals off, right? And then clean up the resistors and then you're going to bring the leads up to the new board. I've got everything hanging here in outer space. 
the filter cap now is totally disconnected. If you take a look at that terminal, you can see she was leaking, right? So they want you to leave this can in place, not only for cosmetics, right? When you look inside and say, hey, look, I still got a filter cap. It also has the landing point for the grounds. Another little tip for ease of installation, cut that stud down. It used to be like way up here. So I cut that, I add a spacer, then the board can sit right down and you can get your nut right in there with a nut driver. And then it gives it a nice professional appearance when you're done. All right, I got all the wiring hooked up to the bottom of the circuit board. Now we got these three runners here that need to go through the hole and connect to the power supplies on those two boards and the 12X4. So the board is bolted down. And if you look down there, you can see my ground runner that is soldered to the chassis. Next thing I need to do is hook up the high voltage leads, which are these three. They go through that hole underneath and we'll land those per the instructions on the SDS sheet. All right, we're all wired up. There's top side, there's bottom side. Ready to buzzer out and give it the initial test. So before you fire it up, grab your own meter. Make sure your leads are good. Go to ground. Buzz out those high voltage lines to ground. Make sure nothing got shorted. Same with the filaments. You want to make sure that nothing is shorted to ground before you power it up. Now that I've buzzed it out and I don't see any shorts, I'm going to bring her up slow on my Variac. Watching the current. And I've got my meter watching the high voltage going over here to one of the circuit boards. So we can make sure that we have high voltage. It's going to take a little bit because the tube's got to warm up. It's either that or I wired it wrong. Not getting anything yet, am I? There she comes. I may have bumped the AC plug on the Bariac. Anyway, here comes a high voltage. I'm at about 60 volts input. I'll bring her up. There's 80. There's a high voltage. It's a good sign. Not sending any smoke signals. There's a hundred volts input. All right, that's what I needed to see. So we got high voltage, and obviously we have filament power, or I would not be seeing any high voltage, right? Because the rectifier wouldn't come on. Good deal. All right, let's turn it down. Let's hook up a signal to it. See what we get out of it. All right, it's powered up. I'm looking at the FM MPX input. There's a scope. So here's one channel. Excellent. I'm using my audio generator as an input. So let's check the other side. Since it's supposed to be stereo, right? And we got it there too. Good sign. So we have life and signal going through the Dynaco PAS. So here's the phono input. Since it uses another circuit board, you obviously want to make sure that works. And you can see it's much more sensitive because we have another uh, stage of gain on that PCB. Looks nice and clean. Selector switches and cutting in and out. I think there's some promise for this. All right, so she's coming along. I also promised the guy that I would rewire that filter switch. So let's get that back in line and give that a test too. Well, I've had the little preamp off and unplugged for about five minutes now and I'm getting ready to wire up that filter switch. I thought, you know what, I better check that high voltage because this thing really doesn't draw much current when it's operating. 
So I'm guessing it probably holds a charge for quite some time after it's off, and yes it does. Look, 116 volts DC just sitting there, all right? So take yourself a little jumper wire, and this is a 1K, 1 watt resistor. Go to ground and just touch the positive lead of your meter and discharge that power supply before you work on it. If you don't and you forget, I guarantee you, you'll know it. So luckily Dynaco has these great diagrams how it was originally wired. So you see that 0.02 cap there and there? They used to go down to the switch and there are those 3.3 mega resistors. So if you look here, you can see what they did is they disconnected from the switch, swung them over there. So I just gotta get that back over there, get the resistoroids in there and hook back to that terminal. All right, I got the filter switch rewired. So that's all back to stock configuration. And I thought, what the heck is going on here? Well, I look down here, this is the balance control, okay? And that's going up into this switch that does all your modes like mono, stereo, all that good stuff, right? Well, you know what? There's no wires coming off the balance pot to the board. So all this has been disabled. And to prove it, I thought, well, I better look at the schematic, right? So I look down here. And you see those jumpers? 11, 12, 13 there, and over here, 5, 6, 7. Well, if you look at the schematic, that's where the balance pot used to go. So that has been disabled. I need to talk to the owner and find out if that's the way he wants it. Well, it looks like Robert Mondavi and I have more work to do on this little Dynaco preamp. Like they say, one thing leads to another. What? Well, who did that song, Marsh? The fix. And that's what I'm here doing, right? I'm fixing it. Anyway, we'll wait till I hear back from the owner. But it looks like the Dynaco Saga is not over yet. So the last tech tip, don't modify this stuff, guys. Keep it stock. You'll be much happier with it.